fashion and sustainability. These are two very different things. Fashion is sexy, addictive, exclusive, and very fast moving. Sustainability, on the other hand, is about slowness, care, flourishing, and responsibility. The common stereotypes surrounding ethical or sustainable fashion only five years ago, they might have evoked something made of rough hewn hemp. Today, the vision is probably closer to the wardrobe favoured by minimalist West Coast blogger types who wear earth tones and drive Teslas. Which is all well and good, except for the fact that there are plenty of people who care about how fashion affects garment labourers and the environment, and have more in common aesthetically with the teenage boys at the local skate park, or see Off-White and Louis Vuitton's Virgil Abloh as the coolest thing that's ever happened in fashion. So why can't sustainable be cool and edgy too? No reason, right? FIB went in search of the latest developments in the field of ethical fashion. Founder of ethical fashion brand Change by Jacob Castaldi ran headfirst into these misconceptions and prejudices prior to launching his brand. You see so many sustainable brands doing amazing things, but mostly targeting a very specific older customer with a more basic style, he told FIB via email. Just back from the Brother Earth launch at Fashion Week in India last week, prominent Australian designer Peter Norton caught up with FIB via Skype. There's a common misconception that ethical fashion uh, is a little bit substandard. There was a period of time where eco fashion would be associated with homemade or fashion that might end up looking like it was made with a knife and fork. And with good intentions, there were lots of efforts to try and do things differently, but in 2018, 19, you can see that uh, ethical fashion is on a whole different level, and in actual fact, it's leading the way in innovation and design globally. The fashion establishment across, uh, you know, the, the, the world are looking at sustainability in many different aspects of how they're working, and that and that is regarded as a as a new frontier, a new opportunity. A couple of years ago, it was appropriate to have a, a CSR platform demonstrating your business practice, but now it's going much deeper. You know, embedded into the design process and the and the manufacturing all the way through to the fibre. So, opportunity created by sustainability as a conversation is going to be. Imagine how fashion operates economically, culturally, socially, and environmentally. Change is just one of the many up and coming urban brands that are attempting to create space for sustainability in the world of streetwear. Other more established labels like Noah and Heron Preston, that are transparent about their shortcomings, but are nonetheless deeply invested in reducing their environmental impact pave the way for the smaller streetwear brands to follow suit. Artisans of Fashion The Australian collective known as Artisans of Fashion goes well beyond being just ethical fashion. They are a social enterprise founded by Sydney-based creative Caroline Poyner with the aim to promote cultural sustainability, authenticity and social change for village artisans in India with a specific focus on empowering women and marginalised communities who have little to no access to alternative sources of income. Since our inception in 2012, we have worked with a number of high-profile Australian designers to create awareness through our exhibitions, social media campaigns, events and designer collaborations, she told FIB. I've always had a passion about social impact and human justice and within fashion I recognised that there were new conversations starting um, around ways of doing things and I was very inspired by Artisans of Fashion and the great work that Caroline has, has established that project. So I reached out to uh, Artisans of Fashion in 2016, opportunity to, to start a conversation really about what contribution I could make to Artisans of Fashion. And since then, we've really established some fantastic relationships across different areas of projects that, that we've continued to evolve. Artisans of Fashion's primary goal is to build sustainable opportunities for artisans in remote communities in India. And through that, 
we broke partnerships with Fashion Bro. So we offer a access point between high fashion, luxury fashion, and the artisans in terms of weaving, dyeing, hand beading, embroidery, lots and lots of techniques that are incredibly noble and traditional that fashion brands find interesting and, and inspirational to work with. Australian designer Cassandra Harper has been working with Indian weavers and artisans for 20 years. I come to India every year, if not twice a year, to work with hand block printers in Jaipur, Jamdani and handloom weavers in West Bengal and in Delhi, with some talented artisans in shibori and beading, she says. This year for Harper turned her attention to Telangana, working with the region's skilled eye-cat weaving clusters. The result of the collaboration was showcased by models on the opening day of the Lotus Makeup India Fashion Week Spring Summer 2019 edition. It included a collection of dresses and separate dominated by ICAT motif in blue, grey and white. Harper's collection was part of a showcase of five Australian labels curated by artisans of fashion. All five designers have collaborated with Indian crafts clusters to create eclectic collections. Presented in association with India's Ministry of Textiles, the showcase was the outcome of the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, between the two countries that was signed at the Textiles India 2017 in Gandhinagar. Along with Harper, the other labels were Romance Was Born by designers Anna Plunkett and Luke Sales, We Are Kindred, founded by Sydney-based sisters Lizzie and Georgie Renkert, Peter Norton's menswear label Brothers Earth, Indian-born designer Rupa Pemaraju's label. So I went over to India with Artists of Fashion for Indian Fashion Week. The impact of that show was a very high impact and brilliant outcome. As a result from that show, we plan to bring that into the Australian Fashion Festival in 2019. Really to showcase Artists of Fashion as a linking point between artisans and fashion. I think what's starting to happen in this awakening, if we can call it that, is that people are looking at value in a different way. So value is no longer about price as the only um, measurement stick or about design aesthetics. It's about the cultural and the environmental impact. It's about the social impact and it's also about the economic. But there's a lot of new examples of corporate thinking in terms of triple bottom line, looking at people, planet, profit, we're going to see a very different measuring tool in relation to how people view and respond to product. The globalised fashion businesses, as they stand, will remain, but their measurements or their, their protocols will be different. And in addition to that, new subgroups will start to emerge and become far more recognised and far more referred and, and supported within the global fashion context. Sometimes in design we talk about problems and possibilities and looking at something which is an issue and then converting it into an advantage. So with Nike, you can see a, an incredible turnaround in terms of their, the shame, I guess. They were using child labor and they were using sweatshops and all this accusational bad publicity that they were able to turn that around and do some very progressive and spearheading lots of change within manufacturing. So I believe that in this economy now with digital media, we're so exposed and transparency is, is an expectation of the consumer, very different to the way it was previously. So the example of, of Nike, I think is a good one because you can see how, you know, with the right integrity and the right marketing, a brand can then shift the paradigm to be in their favour as an outcome. For example, if you look at Levi's or Patagonia, they're global icons, they've got huge annual turnover, and both are regarded, you know, two of the top apparel brands in this ethical and sustainable practice. Now, they've had a long history in terms of their brand integrity, and also ticking those, those ethical and, and environmental boxes we talk about tipping points in trends, you know, this isn't new. This started probably over a decade ago. You know, other businesses like Hermes have been using artisan and very traditional techniques the entire time. So 
what we're really noticing now is just the conversation is getting bigger. And we're seeing that across in tourism and the automobile industry. But there are other notable brands who were not showing in India this year. Homey. The philanthropist label Homey is an Australian label which addresses youth homelessness in Melbourne, where the brand is based. It was conceived through a social media project that focused on sharing the stories of Melbourne's homeless population. Eventually, it grew into a brand after seeing one of its fundraising pop-up stores become successful. Through its partnership with local non-profit called The Pathway Project, Homey hires interns for six months who are homeless and helps provide them with income, job skills, and using them to transition out of homelessness and build a life for themselves. 100% of Homey's proceeds go towards funding its projects aimed at homeless youth. But its philanthropy work isn't the only thing that makes the label an ethical winner. It's also endeavouring to bake ethics into the manufacturing and production of its garments. All of Homey's latest range was produced in Australia using cotton from an ethical fashion Australia certified company. Tees, tracksuits, hoodies and more were part of this collection, making basics both affordable and ethical. Change. Change was created to give consumers who care an outlet to make a positive impact in the world through their purchases. As such, it donates 50% of its net profits to charities like the Malala Fund and Charity Water and produces 100% organic cotton. This brand was, unfortunately, inspired by all the problems still facing our world in 2018, Change's founder Jacob Castaldi said via email. We cannot continue putting the maximization of profit ahead of the projection of our planet. We exist to prove a new model where we give back as much as we make to inspire a new wave of business where greed and maximizing profits is not a priority. And existing to create responsibly by using sustainable materials in everything we make. Inclusivity is also a significant value for the brand. It has used its platform to talk about acne, albinism, disability, sexuality, gender, and more through its choice of models. We live in a world so divided, said Castaldi. It's hard to imagine us being able to come together to protect our planet. That's why we are existing, to represent absolutely everybody. Noah, Brendan Babenzian, former creative director for Supreme, has got a hefty voice in the fashion world when it comes to streetwear. His brand Noah blends the rebellious energy he brought to Supreme with hits of prep and an informed take on how clothing production impacts the planet and garment workers. The brand frequently uses its platform to support and discuss environmental causes, exercising transparency across the board when talking about their packaging waste, factory overrun disposal, and the issues with single-use plastic. It also works to promote other brands that are going above and beyond to feed environmental consciousness in fashion. Noah has an uneasy relationship with being called sustainable, as it is conscious that the most sustainable option would be to cease production. Still, the brand openly publishes more information about its materials and their origins than the average label, and incorporates recycled materials in certain parts of the line. We may not be entirely sustainable, but we are trying our best to be responsible, the brand shared in a blog post. We put integrity above trends and try to work exclusively with suppliers and manufacturers who treat workers fairly. To say we're sustainable would be a lie. To say we're doing a little more with each season would be the truth. So fashion is a part of popular culture. It's embedded in how we view ourselves and how we connect to one another. And the technology in terms of how we're talking about it is really elevating the conversation. And we're also going to start to see the science behind biotechnology and the startups that are coming influence in terms of academic impact. London College of Fashion is starting to do some amazing things in terms of sharing free educational online courses. So there's a massive revolution going on and it's really happening at accelerated pace in the last five to six months, but it's been brewing away for a number of years. Copenhagen uh, Fashion Summit was established in 2009 after the first climate change summit in Copenhagen. That has been a pivotal 
influence on, on global thinking around sustainability in the fashion industry. I'm Peter Norton and you've been watching Fashion Industry Broadcast.